everybody. Happy Sunday. Hope you are doing well. I wanted to bring in a couple of, of stories here, and you may have heard about them uh, before, but before I get to that, I, I want to say thank you for all the support of this channel. It's really grown. I woke up this morning and had over 6,000 subscribers. I'm just, I'm, I'm flattered. I'm, I'm just blown away by that, that over 6,000 people want to listen to what I have to say. Uh, but I know a few days ago, I was I was getting close to 5,000 subscribers. And I'm thinking, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. But then I had no idea. I turned around and now it's 6,000. So again, thank you so much. Uh, all these comments on the videos are awesome. I learned a lot. I, I'm learning a lot. And, uh, and I hope you are. And that's my goal here is to... Uh, create a community where we learn from each other and share ideas and what everybody's doing, what everybody's seeing out there. So that's awesome. Please keep it up. Again, thank you so much. I know a few of you have asked me about doing live streams. I'm thinking about that still, um, and I probably will soon. Uh, one story, and again, you may have seen this, but it's about a superbug fungus outbreak. Uh, noticed in Texas and Washington, D.C. Uh, it says that they're resistant to all known antifungal medications. Uh, it seems to be focusing on uh, immune compromised people. Uh, so they're very vulnerable as far as uh, immune systems are concerned. And it has shown that it uh, has been spread person to person, which is weird. And uh, so it says, I'll, I'll put the links to the uh, articles, of course, in the description for you to read, but uh, it says centers, uh, CDC, Centers of Disease Control Prevention on Thursday reported that there are outbreaks of a drug-resistant superbug fungus spread among patients in hospitals and long-term care facilities in Texas and Washington, D.C. Termed as Candida auris, the fungus preys on weak immune systems. As per the CDC, evidence suggests that these cases involved person-to-person -person transmission, which would be a first in the United States. However, the cluster in the two cities is completely unrelated to each other. Strange to me. I'm not a medical expert. I'm not an immunologist or a virologist, rather, but uh, very interesting, though. 30-day uh, mortality in both outbreaks combined was 30% although other health conditions may have played a role. In Texas, there have been 22 cases, two being, res two being, resistant, to, two being resistant to all three antifungal medications and five resistant to two of the medications. So it is showing uh, an adapt, adaptability, uh, capability to adapt to the strongest antifungal medications. These things just morph on their own, don't they? CDC's uh, official and author of the report was quoted as CBS as saying, this is really the first time we've started seeing clustering of resistance. Concerning, uh, I think best thing we can do you know, it's like, what the heck, every day, every day is something weird, strange, uh, concerning, of course, Just boost, keep boosting, we talked about this before, keep boosting your immune, syst immune systems, uh, eat healthy the best you can, you're able to, uh, exercise the, the most uh, that you're able to as well, your vitamins, supplements, just do all we can to boost our immune systems against all of these kind of things uh, and your normal things, you know, fall, winter, flu season will probably return among other things. So uh, that's the best thing we can do. We boost our immune systems. Uh, keep praying, of course. The other story, somewhat similar. This one caught me by surprise. I just kind of ran across this kind of by accident, but y'all might've seen this too, but this came out a couple of days ago or so, but I read it and then just kind of like, no, I'm not even going to read this. Uh, this is just, I don't know. And then I came back to it this morning, but viruses uh, over 
They've discovered viruses over 15,000 years old found in the melting Tibetan glacier in Western China. So these old viruses have been caught up in these glaciers and uh, they've been found. And it says that uh, most of the viruses found in two samples were unlike any viruses that have been cataloged to date, totally unknown to humans. My first question is what, how did they come up on this? I mean, was this just by accident? Were they intentionally looking for this stuff? And why, what are they gonna do with it? Are well, they gonna say it's for research and learning, but we're dealing with humans here. We're dealing with, uh, you know, I, who knows? Who's behind this, who's funding it? What are they gonna do with it? And I'm not a big conspiracy guy, but then again, you have to look at reality. It's 2021, you know, we just saw what can go on in 2020. Nothing surprises me anymore, nothing, okay? But anyway, uh, that was the gist of it, that the very old viruses and they're studying them. And uh, like I said, they're, they're caught up in these glaciers. Uh, team analyzed the ice. They found genetic codes for 33 viruses. Like I said, unknown to humans. Uh, so they can thrive in extreme environments and adapt. But uh, one thing out of it said, uh, the documentation and, and understanding of that is extremely important as how do bacteria and viruses respond to climate change? What happens when we go from an ice age to a warm period, like we are, or like we have been going through? What happens to it then? Okay, so again, kind of interesting story, very interesting to me, uh, but share your thoughts. Have you heard about this? What do you think? Something more nefarious behind this? I tend to think so. Okay. But anyway, I think that's it for right now. I uh, hope you have a good rest of your Sunday and what's left of this weekend. Again, thank you so much uh, for all the support. Uh, take care. Uh, be safe out there. God bless you. See you soon.